All right, and Mushoku Tensei Season 2, Episodes 5, 6, and 7. Don't forget to check out that Patreon if you guys want the early access or full-length versions of any of the reactions on the channel. Please leave a like on this video and let me know your thoughts down below in that comment section. It really does help with the algorithm. I appreciate y'all immensely. Let's hop right into today's episodes. Let's do it. All right, we finally made it. Selena Lise ran out of men on the road. I should have been traveling. I missed my opportunity. Ooh, already with the wand selling. With the giant luminous crystals. I can already feel the magical essence of this area. Crazy. Is that a real thing for Alina Lise? Or is, I thought she was just horny. I mean, it would make sense for an arousal, lustful curse that, I don't know, it doesn't actually make sense, but maybe it does in this world. Now, I do remember at the end of the last episode, we saw Sylphie, Ariel, Luke, maybe not Luke, Cliff. All right, so we're meeting Genius. I'm very curious what he's going to want from us. Man God, but <laughs> that's Misroxy to you. See, this is what I'm nervous about. Any underlying motives, you know? I'm hoping everything is A-OK -okay here and we're cool. I don't know. This world is crazy. See, I'm nervous of showing our exploits to other people we don't trust yet, you know? If another silent caster here, do we really? Come on, Sylphie, come on. This is the reunion I've been waiting for for literally 20 plus episodes. I love this. I'll be your under underling. I'll be your subordinate. Come on, as not as if he wasn't the one who taught Sophie everything she knows. Oh, he's just now thinking about it. You gave that wand to her. I love the little second ahead in the eye we can see. Now to do some healing magic. I always just think of a uh, dragon god. Being a good sport. I'm, I want them to know. Come on. I bet he's never held a weapon. Same train of thought as last time. What dainty hands. You're a ladies man. All the ladies are going to love you. Student council president. I can picture Ariel being the student council president, yeah. The guardian silent frit silent fits and Luke, yep. Yeah. Well he is a grey rat. He's technically Paul's nephew, right? Paul's brother's son. She does. I've only known her for that first episode, episode zero, but I really like Ariel so far. And Luke. We know I love, uh, Sylphie. Oh, is that fucking, um, Zenobu? Oh, he's one of the only people with that, like, style of hair. Oh, that's Cliff! The hell? What are the odds? Master! Master! <laughs> Oh my god, don't break the floor, don't kill us. He'll punch us, we'll go through the roof. Yeah. Linia. A fifth year, Dedoldia. She's from uh, Ghislaine's village, right? Wasn't that Dedoldia village? My dad, Gius, is the war chief of Doldia Village. I thought it was the Doldia, but you no, know, but Dold. I was about to say, she can't be the same one from when we were there with Eris, but no, we would recognize her. She just has to be like an older sibling, I assume. Yes, I, I don't remember his name. It is an older sister. Okay. So we have Linia, we have Gius, who's our old man, Persena. And then we have Cliff. So, this, so far, just this is this homeroom or is this a study room? What is this? So far, this is already an interesting group of characters. 
And he has a vengeance for Rudy because of Eris. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably. Hmm. Magical genius. I know, that's kind of weird to put that as your title. I know. Mind magic, too. I like how you can have your own rank for individual aspects of, of magic, you know? I don't know if this is, this is going to be PTSD bad news for Rudy. He just, that name is going to bring back hmm, a flood of emotions. See? Like, obviously this is just normal everyday stuff to them, but to me, a magical school, whether it's Hogwarts, whether it's this, whether it's the Citadel in Game of Thrones, anything like this is so cool to me. I would be reading all about ancient history, this, that, and the third. Yeah, that is, look at the size of this library. Where do you start? Is there an erectile dysfunction magical book? I don't think so. This is so awkward, I love it. Rudy. <laughs> She's just now getting the information about Rudy, you know? Three years. Aww. That's heartwarming. I mean, yeah. Of course. Of course. And now I'm over here curious why Sophie wouldn't want to introduce herself, but she has her own role as Fitz. Okay. She has her own role as Fitz with Arya. She doesn't want to just, you know, uh, she doesn't want to break her undercover role. I get it. You know, she wants to do, you know, there's no rush or anything. We can meet each other in a couple weeks. <laughs> and he's actually... I just love how both times we've met Sophie, we thought she was a boy. <laughs> you did say he reminded you of Paul, so... I mean, we're new here. What do you expect us to do? We don't have magical powers. Yes, it is. He's got the two girls on his arms. Mm. Yeah, I remember that, yep. She was told to flee and to do the best she can on the road. Silent fits. Like Zenoba giving us the details, the information. I'm surprised a white-haired elf, but the... No, I was about to say, the, the hair didn't change color until episode zero of the season, so I'm like, come on, put it together. Are those actual panties, or are we just hallucinating, Roxy? What? Is that Sylphie? Are those Sylphies, or are those Roxy's? They, have, they can't be Roxy's, so it's like, Sylphie's give. This might be one of the worst things that can happen on a campus where the girls are stationary and they're... You got caught white-handed. They're Ariels? Okay, that's a great excuse. I don't know if that actually was what happened, but that was a great excuse. Okay, Sophie, standing up for your mans? It's a whole new level of respect I have for Sophie. That was one of the most Goliad. Jesus. That is a big woman. I love the luminous crystals being lighter. It gives me like Elden Ring. Any magical, you know, I love that shit. 
Now that's just not true. No, they would not. With the utmost respect, Senpai, Mister, I like it. I like how the roles have reversed. Like now, Rudy has the, and he doesn't even know it's Sophie. I know, right? It's weird. The roles have reversed. Hearing you thank me, normally it's the other way around. I wonder when this, not secret. I wonder when this information is going to be revealed. Uh, 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 uh. Come on. That's a that's a great shot. Oh, I got chills ending the night. Renoa. Was that the first episode? Damn. I'm actually glad I got two more. This is one of the benefits of being behind, you know? All right, on to episode six. First off, I love the ending that just played with Sophie, like watching Rudy grow up from a boy to a young man, seeing how he's... I love that shit. I love the change we're getting throughout the season, throughout the show. I love that, man. Gotta be consistent. I love it. At least we have a buddy to eat with, you know? With the imagery of the water. Okay. Okay. He's making full efficiency of the time he's doing here. The time he's spending here. Teleportation is taboo, really? So what would a mass teleportation be? Of course, no, yeah. <laughs> I love the way we're being coy about this. We're teetering around it. And you can't blame yourself. You were like, what, 10, 12? Of course. So formal. I love it. Rudy's like, am I gay? I keep blushing over this guy. He's just so amazing. He's like, maybe this is the cure for my... Maybe I'm just into men. Even though the man I'm into is actually a woman. I'm confused. I love how we're being coy. Come on. Yeah, would you now, Rudy? Would you? Notice it? I'm sure I don't swing that one. Now, I've always shipped uh, Rudy and Eris, but, you know, I could totally ship. I'm not a big shipper myself, but anyone that makes you happy, I always say be with. Not the... Okay. They worked tirelessly throughout the night. As little magic as possible, okay? So a pure cement brick. We'll carve them out ourselves, yes. Could be clay, ceramic, yeah. If you're skilled physically, manually enough with your hands, you can turn that into... Hmm. Oh, he is extraordinarily strong. I didn't even think about that. Imagine him being a surgeon with a scalpel. Uh-huh. And what did they do? Now, I don't know any real spoilers, but I do know there was a, a lot of controversy over the last couple of weeks about some slavery business in these episodes. I'm very curious. 
You're gonna come with us? And it's like a real deal Holyfield date. Even though it's not a date. Just a fun date. Platonic date. Alright, we're gonna go hit the... This is a weird group date. Like, hey, you guys wanna go golfing? Wanna go to the movie? No, let's go to the slave market. Let's go. Just saying that out loud was weird for me. <laughs> Look at the fucking cuff and chain logo. Oh my god. Yeah, imagine if Gila <laughs> straight naked. <laughs> Spoken like a true virgin. Yeah. Would you rather be a virgin or rather not be a virgin with ED? Anytime I hear dwarves and dexterity now, I just want to play fucking Baldur's Gate. Jesus. You can't speak human. She's malnourished. You can't read. Who knows what other awful things she's been through. Now, I'm not one to say silver linings or anything like that when it comes to slavery. But at least, at the very least, I could say whoever we happen to choose or if we do choose someone today is gonna have a better life with Rudy and uh, Sophie than in this current scenario. I can't say that with a certainty, but I'm almost certain because this is horrible. Look at this. This is with this. Is, oh my! On the throat too. Rudius is trilingual, right? Knows. Hmm. Hey, whoa, buddy. We do not need any discipline. We're good. Let us work. Let us have a little patience. See? And now, I know this is a very ethical and touchy topic, we'll say for some, but I always just look back to my prime example of Isekai slavery. I don't have a lot. I don't have a long list to draw from, but... I always look back to Raftalia and now Fumi from Rising of the Shield Hero and how I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but it's a situation similar. Like you can really save someone from a scenario like this and become family to them, love them, best friend. Like I don't know what's going to happen with Mushoku because it's a very different show and they like to throw these plot twists at us, but Someone who longs for death, hates life, lost hope. Maybe Rudy can relate and we can help her. He's like, I'll kill you if it's truly what you want, knowing from someone who's been in your scenario, you know? I don't want to die. I want to die. I don't want to die. That's what we wanted to hear. There's still... Uh, a semblance of hope and uh, faith in there. It's enough. Yeah, it doesn't have to be I want to live. It has to be I don't want to die. That's a tragic way of phrasing it in and of itself. God damn. So like I said, we're definitely on a morally, ethically gray area, but I'm not going to judge until we see what happens with her and how we treat her, you know? Probably doesn't even have a name. Juliet. He likes Julie. Juliet is her name. Julie, a little nickname for her. Aww, a little butterfly. I was about to say, because her number one goal is to help her, like, figure making, right? Was that the end of episode six? This is not where I was expecting this uh, show to go, or this arc, I should say. Interesting. All right, on to the final episode of this session. This is episode seven. We got Sylphie waking up. Making a nice bowl of water to wash her face, brush her teeth. 
He also, just like Rudy, has a little morning regimen. A hat. Oh, she's going out not as fits right now. With the normal clothes. I like how we're getting this from her POV. Her narrating it and stuff like that. So this is her morning routine. I like how you can see him in the background. I like how they have their morning routines. They're very different, but they're similar just because they want, you know, I love that. I love how we're getting her narrating this. I love being in her mind. Ariel asking her questions. I have no toes. He's like, I'm again. I got riz, bro. I got riz in my veins. He was talking about experience yesterday. Hey, we can't compare Paul and Rudy. You can't compare Paul to your average man. That man is a deviant. That man is a fucking craze. You guys want to be just friends, best friends, family, like non-blood fam? Do you guys want to be together? Crystal reflecting light on her eye. Oh, she's thinking. Oh, with the ears getting blush red too. Okay, back with Julie a month. We use one incantation. And then we try to do it without incantation. That's progress. Just a month. That's progress insanely. Awesome. See, like, I'm not gonna put myself out there. That's the same as in Shield Hero as well. They have that so they can't leave. Yeah, let's not call her a slave. She's my apprentice, and she's a junior disciple. And I have a weird feeling that her life is much better right now. I miss Ruijard so bad. I want to see him so bad. I love how she's just... <laughs> <laughs> he broke it? It's in pieces. He's gonna have a fucking aneurysm. It's in pieces, it has to be. Julie's like, yeah, I'm gonna get the hell out of here. I don't know what's going on, but... Even though it's a little OD and a little funny, I do love his actual undying devotion and loyalty to Roxy. He would not be the man he is today without her. It was Linia and Persena? Uh. They crossed the line messing with Queen Roxy. Aw, oh, hell nah. He's so genuinely, he feels so bad. The way they're animating him, just sobbing, jeez. You know he feels bad, Julie giving him some comfort. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even put it into perspective until he said that. Imagine someone comes in here and smashes my PC with a bat. Nah, let's teach him a lesson. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're lucky I don't have incantationless magic. I'm gonna be doing some shenanigans. Look at the way he's standing. You can tell the way they're standing too. Zenobo's like, this is my guy. He, he wants to talk to you. He, he wants to talk to you. I'm pretty sure if Rudy can kill a red dragon, he could take you two on. Talking shit. With the water stopping on the fountain. Ooh. Oh, she is fast, fast. Great stuff. That eye being able to see like a second or however much he wants in the future, depending on the magic he uses, is so fucking sweet. I love it. That's why he's Quagmire right there. Quagmire Rudius. 
We literally hogtied him. Okay. Yeah, this could get very weird very fast, depending on how Mushoku wants to do this. <laughs> See? This is... Oh, oh, oh. This is what I'm talking about. I wait my newborns. Oh my god. He just wanted to test. Jesus. You're showing them the holy relic? Likeness of my deity. Yeah, to a religious man. That is, that is blasphemy. That is sacrilegious right there. Snitch. I saved your dad's village. I mean, we could do that to you. No, we're not going to do that. You know? I, yeah, that's all I was saying. Because that was torturous when they threw Rudy in that prison. And this is my sacred beast that you guys just broke. He's not lying. He's not lying. She's like, so where do I actually punish them now? Are they still? No, there's no way. I will satisfy me. I won't leave them holding a grudge or seeking revenge. What's our what's our solution to that? That is a tricky problem. What happened? Did they piss themselves? I'd have to assume so. What are we gonna? Okay. Basically. Really? I didn't know. That's actually pretty. Imagine having that on your face forever, unibrow and all, all day tomorrow. That's embarrassing. That's a fair punishment. If you... Ghislaine. Come on, if you guys... Yeah, if you guys could see how fast she's moving, you guys are fucking turtles compared to her. And they're her uh, uh, nieces. Well, that episode took a turn. I was not expecting it to be like this, but I guess it worked out. I think she just made that up. Yeah. The holy relic. Now we're a follower of a Roxy. We're a Roxyite. I can't believe we've spent episodes together and we still don't know who each other are. You know, well, I mean, obviously, Sylphie knows, but come on. I wonder if the red eyes are going to be a giveaway. Mm. I'm very curious. You would have realized she's Sophie. You guys would have fallen in love, and who knows? That was the end? Damn. These were some great episodes. We're starting the Renoa uh, Magic School arc. It's going really well. I was not expecting. I was expecting Zenoba because we saw him last episode, or you know, beforehand, and we saw Cliff. I was not expecting 
Cliff to play as little a role as he is. I'm, I was expecting him to be a little bit bigger. I'm curious as to how he's going to play later on. Um, very interesting seeing uh, Linia and Persena, Gia's daughters, or at least uh, Linia is his daughter and Persena is probably just a friend. But everything that happened with Juliet was not what I was expecting. But we have technically an apprentice. We're not going to call her a slave. Um, I'm really liking the way she is uh, being raised up right now, living it up. And it doesn't seem like it's going to be quite like Raftalia, where Raftalia, because of her beast girl fusion, hybridness, like she grows or uh, ages at a much faster rate. Whereas Juliet seems like she's just going to be a six year old dwarf and girl and grow up as like a normal. I wonder though, is she going to be like super short because she's a dwarf? Like she, I, I wonder all that, but. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed these episodes. I cannot wait for this next one. Cannot wait to continue this arc and get into the next one. I am very curious, however, what the like the climax or what the antagonist of this arc is going to be. You know, whereas like our still our number one goal primarily was finding our family, but at this point, family seems to be okay. We got Paul, Roxy, everyone else looking for Zenith. She seems to be cool. We got Alina Lise with us. We're just like, I'm curious what our next overarching big goal is going to be. Hopefully you guys are excited as I am. If you are, please leave a like, let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to subscribe, all that jazz. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.